So, a tragic development in Gaza tonight, where in the last hour or so, Palestinian health officials have said hundreds of people have been killed in an Israeli airstrike that hit a hospital. The Baptist Hospital is located in the center of the Gaza Strip, and officials say that there may be hundreds of victims in the rubble. Eyewitnesses have been describing apocalyptic scenes with buildings on fire, roofs that have caved in and broken bodies and glass everywhere. There were lots of people who were taking shelter in the hospital because they believed it to be safer. And our eyes chief correspondent John Cookson joins me now live from Tel Aviv. Uh, thank you, John, for joining us. No doubt a long day for you, and we appreciate the fact that you're across all the developments. Um, what can you tell us about what happened at that hospital? It sounds like an extremely serious incident with lots of scenes of chaos and carnage. Absolutely horrific scenes uh, emerging from this, uh, what is believed, be, believed to be an Israeli airstrike, according to Hamas at the uh, hospital, uh, bodies everywhere, body parts, uh, a truly horrific scene in a, a region that's seen so much horror in the last few days, and the death toll being put at between 300 and 500 uh, people uh, tonight. Now, the Israelis have uh, started an investigation. Uh, they they say they they say they're still looking into things. Uh, Rear Admiral uh, Daniel Hagari says there are a lot of airstrikes, a lot of failed rockets, and a lot of false reports by Hamas. Nevertheless, uh, the indications are that this uh, uh, seems to have been an airstrike. Uh, by the Israelis, why they would attack a hospital uh, isn't clear, uh, although it has to be said that Hamas has uh, stored weaponry uh, in hospitals before. Uh, but this hospital was under siege anyway, with so many patients, and at least 4,000 people had taken refuge there uh, to escape the fighting uh, in, in the further north of uh, Gaza, this hospital in, in Gaza City. Now, Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian president who presides over the West Bank, uh, Palestinians, has cancelled his meeting with President Biden tomorrow and declared three days of national mourning. And already tonight in the West Bank, uh, there's, uh, there are disturbances as Palestinians protest about, about this horrific uh, uh, apparent attack by an Israeli airstrike. But uh, I have to stress that the Israelis say uh, at the moment uh, they think it's a failed rocket. Uh, and uh, what that means, is, and I've actually seen on social media, Hamas firing a rocket and then it uh, not uh, getting its trajectory and then falling to earth uh, in an explosion. Now, was that what really happened? We don't know. And uh, it's going to be some hours, I think, uh, before things become a lot clearer. So all we know is this horrific explosion has taken place at the hospital. There are hundreds of people dead, maybe 500. If it was an Israeli airstrike, it's a grim opener to the Biden visit uh, tomorrow. And it's the kind of incident that will turn any Western opinion which is in favor of Israel against Israel. And who knows what the consequences of this, this might be. It may provoke uh, Israel uh, to uh, hold back uh, its planned ground invasion of Gaza. This is a developing story. We just don't know. But uh, on the human level, a complete tragedy in Gaza tonight. And John, let's uh, continue on the trajectory of that human tragedy, because we understand there are possibly hundreds of people still trapped in the rubble there. And the hospitals, of course, in complete crisis, running out of blood, water and medicines and barely functioning. You're right, Charles, it was barely functioning uh, after uh, so many days of bombing and so many uh, patients being rushed to the hospital. And ironically, the people uh, who were taking shelter there uh, uh, know that it was a, a Baptist-run hospital with links to the West and to America. And they thought never in their wildest dreams would this hospital 
be attacked by Israel if indeed this was an Israeli airstrike. And uh, already all the hospitals in, in Gaza are, are on the brink of collapse. They're just overwhelmed with patients and lack of medical supplies. Ironically, just a few kilometers away on the other side of the Rafah crossing in Egypt are tons of medical supplies waiting uh, to cross into uh, Gaza. But at the moment, the Egyptians and the Israelis aren't giving uh, permission for that medical aid to reach, uh, reach Gaza. And that's, of course, another subject that uh, uh, President Biden will be uh, pressed on when, when he arrives in Israel tomorrow. And uh, John, uh, if, if this incident tonight is confirmed to have been an Israeli airstrike, I mean, how much pressure is that likely to put on Israel to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza? A huge amount of pressure, Charles, but I, I, I don't know whether it will actually tip the balance. Uh, th there's a lot of fear about the Rafa crossing being opened even to one-way traffic because an, an opening into Egypt could prompt thousands of Palestinians to try to escape uh, the horrors of Gaza and flood into Egypt, into Sinai, which is a, a, a military zone. The Egyptians have made it absolutely clear that they, they do not want refugees, uh, uh, Palestinian refugees, surging uh, across the border into Egypt. So it may well be that as horrible as this is, uh, th th that might not allow the uh, 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 Rafa crossing to be opened, although it, it's, it's conceivable that uh, trucks, and there are many trucks with medical supplies, might just be allowed in. But to open those gates is such a symbolic thing for both the Egyptians and the Israelis. It's, it's hard to know which way it's going to go. And uh, John, this is clearly a mass casualty event, as you've, you've, you've mentioned, and it's obviously going to dominate the news uh, over the coming hours and possibly days. I mean, you, you, you touched on this briefly, but what might it mean for the Israeli, the planned Israeli ground offensive and also President Biden's visit to Israel on Wednesday and the politics around all of this? That's a good question, Charles. And uh, look, if it was an Israeli airstrike and there are 300, 500 I've seen even reports of a thousand dead tonight, those buried under rubble. Uh, then that will have a huge impact on, on the Biden visit, which is also already uh, politically dangerous for, for, for Joe Biden uh, uh, because it represents uh, U.S. foreign policy in in, in the region. It's going. It was going to be a difficult trip anyway, with uh, massive issues on the table like laying the groundwork for the freedom of uh, some hostages, perhaps, uh, keeping civilians safe. How ironic that is at this stage. Uh, and also getting humanitarian aid. And so uh, these are three big issues. And frankly, uh, Blinken, the US Secretary of State, has had a bit of a cold shoulder uh, in his uh, diplomatic uh, round robin of uh, six Arab states because the, all, all the leaders of the Arab states including al-Sisi, have said to him that uh, the U.S. must pressure Israel to make sure that uh, uh, civilians are kept safe. Now, it, it, as I say, if this is an airstrike, uh, um, maybe a mistake, maybe an error by, by someone, and it was conducted by Israel, then it's going to put uh, thing, uh, Israel's position and America's position in, into, into a very difficult territory. And as I said earlier, it could, it could, pressure Israel to either delay or call off altogether its planned incursion into Gaza. And John, beyond um, the, the short term, I mean, you know, you, you are one person who's had a lot of experience as a correspondent reporting from the Middle East and in other parts of the world. I mean, we, we hear a lot about how intractable a conflict this is, but not so much about how to resolve it. But I'm sure you know that there's got to be a short, medium and long term solution. How do you think any sort of peaceful outcome might be achieved? 
Look, uh, the prospect of peace in this region, uh, I mean, they've been fighting each other for, for, for decades. And don't forget, there's a religious element uh, to, to this, uh, Charles, which is a powerful motivator. Uh, I was interested to uh, hear today that America is asking Israel to think about what happens when they get when they dispose of Hamas, because militarily the uh, Israelis are quite capable of, of doing that, that's for sure. But what comes next? Who's going to rule Gaza next? Uh, the Americans are counseling against uh, Israel occupying Gaza. So who else could run the place? Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian uh, uh, president of another faction of the Palestinian uh, uh, diaspora? I don't think so. The UN? Maybe, uh, but the UN isn't what the UN was back in the 60s and 70s. It, it, it's, it's not as strong, it's not as united as it, as it was. Uh, and remember, the Americans made a terrible mistake 20 years ago in 2003 when they uh, led a massive coalition to uh, depose Saddam Hussein in Iraq, but they didn't think what comes next. So they got rid of all the uh, security forces, the army, the police, and there was chaos in I I Iraq. And it led ultimately to the formation of Islamic State. And this was a, a, a great uh, minor issue that the uh, Americans uh, didn't look into, and yet it uh, caused such uh, problems later. They didn't think things through. And it's ironic that the Americans are now asking the Israelis to think what happens next, what happens after Hamas have been uh, uh, slaughtered or, or kicked out of, uh, out of Gaza. John, thank you very much indeed. And I hope you manage to get some rest uh, tonight. And I also want to thank you for your sterling coverage, but then I don't expect anything less. John Cookson is Arise's chief correspondent. He was talking to me there from the Israeli city of Tel Aviv.